Stephen Toulman's model of argument analysis has become the standard in the years since its publication, and many critical thinking and philosophy classes use it as the basis of their concepts. It's a model we will use in this class, too. While some explore outer space or the depths of the ocean, Stephen Toulman has spent his career thinking about thinking and the ways we construct the world through our patterned use of language. One of his ongoing efforts has been to, quote, develop practical arguments which can be used effectively in evaluating the ethics behind moral issues, unquote. It was Toulman's recognition of the limitations of formal argumentation to describe and evaluate complex arguments of everyday life that led him to focus on developing a more flexible model that included more elements commonly used to shade meaning. Toulman has written prolifically and his works are easily available for further study. He continues to research, refine, and teach his methods. Toulman's model for argument analysis includes six major elements. The first three are the most basic, the claim, the warrant, and the grounds. As with so many theoretical concepts that have developed over time, two of the first three key elements can be referred to by different names. For instance, the claim could also be called the conclusion, proposition, hypothesis, or thesis. And the grounds could also be called the data, reasons, and evidence. It's important to know that these terms are sometimes used to refer to slightly different and distinct elements in other theories, but they are also used to describe the very same thing in other instances. Even in this class, I will use the terms somewhat interchangeably. I know it's not fair, but that's just the way it is. That's why we'll take a deeper look at each element. As we go through the explanation of Toulmin's model, try to clarify in your own mind how the terms function within the whole picture of an argument. The claim can also be called the conclusion, hypothesis, proposition, thesis, or even the premise, plea, or position. That can get a bit confusing, so you need to keep in mind what it is the claim, by any name, tries to accomplish. The claim of an argument is what the arguer wants the audience to accept, believe, or do. It is a statement that asserts something is valid, true, real, factual, or believable. Questions cannot be claims. Citizen Kane is one of the best movies of all time is a claim. It makes a statement the arguer wants the audience to accept. Honeybees are disappearing is also a claim. So is haagen strawberry ice cream is the best. The difference between the first two claims and the final one is how much support is needed to convince the audience. The strawberry ice cream claim is one of taste and taste is highly subjective so it's probably not worth the effort to argue this, especially with my chocoholic husband. The Citizen Kane assertion can be argued on the basis of innovation and other more defensible types of evidence, but again, this claim is also somewhat subjective. The honeybee claim, though, is one that asserts a fact, and facts can be checked. The one making this claim can and should provide sufficient factual evidence to support the conclusion. Most arguments require more than simply making a claim in order to have them accepted, and this is especially true when making an academic argument. In Toulmin's model, the support for an argument is called the grounds. It can also be called data, reasons, evidence, and even support. Again, I will be using these terms almost interchangeably, even though in some circumstances they have unique definitions. For instance, in law, evidence has a much different definition and expectation than reasons, even though they both function as grounds for an argument being made. 
The grounds that support a claim can range from very weak subjective assertions to very strong factual ones. What works as evidence in one situation may not work as evidence in all situations, though. Evidence can be categorized in a number of ways. It can be direct or secondary. It can be physical or circumstantial. It can be anecdotal, testimonial, statistical, or analogical. We will explore the various types of evidence later in the class. For our current purpose, it's important to realize that if one makes a claim, one must support that claim with evidence sufficient to make the case. The warrant is a unique aspect of practical argumentation that Toulman introduced to help reveal the values and beliefs of the arguer because they have such a strong impact on the argument being made. The warrant is what causes an arguer to think it is appropriate to make the particular claim that's being made. For instance, the person who argues abortion should not be allowed is usually functioning on a warrant that a fertilized egg constitutes a human. Further, that person may believe there is a moral obligation to avoid ending a human life. We can write a syllogism to show that warrant. All human life is sacred and should be protected. A fertilized egg is a human life. Therefore, no fertilized human egg should be destroyed. On the other side, the warrant may be that individual right takes precedent over potential personhood. We can write a syllogism to show that warrant, too. Persons have rights not enjoyed by potential persons. A fertilized egg is a potential but unrealized individual. Therefore, a woman, a fully realized individual, has a right to decide the fate of the potential individual within her. Warrants are almost never explicitly stated. There are a good many times when they are not even recognized by those making the argument. However, they are the fundamental values and assumptions each of us makes that often cause us to th not think rationally about an argument. We will talk more about this when we discuss values and assumptions. The backing is the evidence one uses to support the warrant. All the same types of evidence might come into play that are used in supporting a claim. And the addition of beliefs, such as religious beliefs, can also be backing that is supporting a warrant. The thing about backing that supports warrants is that it need not be rational or factual or even accurate. It is simply the evidence the arguer is using to support a belief or assumption about an argument. For example, Bill Clinton's explanation for why he was sexually involved with other women when he was president was because I could do it. Reduced to a syllogism, this would look something like, presidents can do what they want to do. I was president, therefore I could do what I wanted to do. Qualifiers are limitations placed on an argument. They are very useful because they indicate how strongly or forcefully the arguer intends to defend the claim. As with other parts of arguments, there are different types of qualifiers, but you can frequently identify them because of keywords that indicate limitation or strength. Frequently in the previous sentence is a qualifier. It indicates the claim being made is fairly strong, but still has room for situations in which one cannot identify a qualifier because of a particular word. A few of the many other words that indicate qualification include all, some, none, occasionally, usually, probably, possibly, and statistics. Hmm, how can a statistic be considered a qualifier? Well, what if someone says smoking is directly responsible for 90% of lung cancer deaths? 
Doesn't that seem like a stronger argument than saying most lung cancer deaths are due to smoking? The most important thing to remember about qualifiers is that they alter the scope of the argument being made. They either make the claim more forceful and strong or they make it weaker. Rebuttal is the part of an argument many arguers ignore. Rebuttal is the opposition's point of view. If an arguer forgets that there are multiple perspectives to be considered and multiple interpretations of most types of evidence, then the arguer can get caught short if someone makes an, an objection which has not been considered. When you're making an argument, you should always take the time to find out what the opposition really thinks, what evidence it uses to make its case. Doing that can help you to make a stronger case for your own position by showing how the opposition's position is weaker, or it may cause you to rethink your own position because the opposition is using better factual evidence than you are. For instance, in the recent healthcare debate, there are those who support the administration's plan and there are those who oppose it. Some of those who oppose the plan argue it contains passages that establish death panels that will pick and choose who gets to live. Because the proponents of the plan can point to the exact passages that show this is not the case, the arguments of those who claim there will be death panels is weaker than those who claim there won't be any such thing. But if the proponents did not take the time to look up the passages being referenced, they would have had no way to refute the claims being made. Each of the concepts of argumentation you read about in asking the right questions has a counterpart in the Toulmin model of argumentation. The issue and conclusion are equivalent to the claim. The reasons are the grounds. Ambiguities fall into the qualifier category, though there's more to it than that. Values and, and assumptions are included in Toulmin's warrants. And the strategy of reverse role playing is a tactic for recognizing rebuttal. The Toolman model is a valuable aid in both constructing and deconstructing or analyzing arguments. Thank you.